let's get started with our tutorial here. And I'm here on the Google Cloud console on my account, the accounts that I have set up, and you should do the same thing. Just sign up for a new account if you don't have one and create a new project. Next thing is you have to enable the Firebase into your project. So that's quite easy. Just go to the Firebase page and then you can assign your project to Firebase as well. So we can have access to all the good stuff that Firebase offers us. Next here is to install the local emulator. And the local emulator is simply a mechanism to help us to develop things locally. And then we can later on simply deploy to Google Cloud. And the behavior is going to be exactly the same. So that's quite handy to test and develop locally without having to rely on the online services. And then we can simply integrate later on, simply deploy and do our integration tests on the Google Cloud environment. So just in a nutshell, the emulator offers us lots of stuff, such as uh, off the Firestore emulator, which is the one we are going to use for our demo, storage, um, real-time database, functions, hosting, and a lot of other stuff. In order to set up the emulator, you have to install it first. So that's done via the Google Cloud CLI. And once it is installed, you can simply call Firebase version. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Let me just create this folder here first. And Firebase local demo. So this is the folder I'm going to use for my demo. As I have previously installed Firebase, so it's all good. I already have it. And that's basically what we have to do in order to start creating our code and testing everything locally. So we will have the same database, but that's going to be local to us. And if you want to deploy it later on, so the behavior is going to be the same. So it's going to work perfectly fine with the Firestore on the cloud. So let's get started. I'm going to go back to the command line here and I'm going to initialize Firebase. So Firebase init. This is to initialize Firebase on my local folder here. And yes, I want to proceed. And what I want here is to have the emulators because I need to emulate Firestore locally. So the emulators and I will also use an existing project because I already have that project. We could even create a new project, but that's not the case. Let's simply use an existing one. And now it offers me to pick a project that I have, as you guys may have noted. Um, this is, is going to be the same project as I have here registered for the Firebase console. After that, you can simply choose. This is the one I want. And what I want here now is the Firestore emulator because I want to use the Firebase database in order to persist my to-do lists. And this is what I'm going to choose and pick Firestore emulator. And we can just leave here on the default port. So that's going to be port 88. And I also want the local emulator UI. That's going to be handy for us to see what's going on. And just leave it to the default port. And yes, download all emulators. I already have them locally. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to clean the screen. And now, as you guys can see, there is a configuration file here called firebase.json type. Firebase.json. And yeah, it has all the configuration necessary for us to start the Firebase locally. And I believe we are good to go. Now, Firebase emulators start. So, this is the command for us to start the emulators. And this is what we're going to do right now. So, it's going to run whatever we have configured first, which is the 
Firestore, and that's gonna be for using the database. And it's running on the port 88 here, and we also have the access to the console, as I'm gonna show you guys right now. So if I open a new tab and I call Firestore, so now I have my Firestore database in here, which as you guys can see, that's exactly or very similar to the Firestore database we have in Google Cloud. So it's time, we're gonna run this locally here. So that's gonna be easier for us to test. Next step is to open a new command line and I'm gonna go to that folder, which is the same folder as I have initialized my Firebase. And I'm gonna create a new folder here to hold our application. So it's gonna be a to-do. And now I'm going to start creating my project in Go. So go mod init github.com slash marcimarinho slash to do. I also have another video on my channel about how to start a project on Golang, which I'm not gonna go in details as I go on details on that video. So that's pretty much the comment. Go mod in it, github.com slash marcimarinho slash to do. After that, I can say, oh, that's my mistake. I have to go to the to do folder and let me execute this command again. And now I have the new module here and that's gonna have only a go mod. Next step here is to open my project on Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna open that folder and that's gonna be the projects, YouTube, and Firebase local demo, and my project's called to do. Here we go. I have pretty much nothing, and I'm gonna create a file here so I can start testing my stuff. I'm gonna create a new file here called main.go. It's gonna be the main file. And the package name, that's gonna be main as well. And now a function called main. This is where I'm gonna start doing all of my work. The first thing that I want to test here is test the local connection with Firebase because I want to know if it is working or not. And for that, I need to first install a new package for our application. So go get dash u. Let me clean this screen first. Go get dash u and then firebase.google.com slash go. This is gonna install all the necessary packages for my Golang application in order to have access to the Firebase. And we are good now and I can go back to the Visual Studio Code. Let me just enlarge a little bit more, so it's gonna be um, more visible for everybody. Next step here is to test a new connection. So let's get a new context here. It's gonna be context.background. We will need that. And we need a new configuration. That's gonna be a firebase.config and we're gonna pass the project ID, which is gonna be the project ID I have, which is this project ID in here. So once I save, um, I still need to import all the other stuff, but let me import the Firebase dependence here. And yeah, now I have the Firebase dependence here. And let's keep going. Now I need an application. That's gonna be an application or an error because I want now the Firebase to instantiate a new application. And I'm gonna pass the context and also the configuration. 
So that's all we need here, a context and then a configuration. The configuration is simply a new Firebase configuration and specifying the project ID we want to execute. Now, some error handling here. If error is not new, then we just gonna print the error that we got from Firebase. It's gonna be error initializing up and then it's gonna format something here and then we're going to pass the error to the log and we're gonna simply return so to finish the function execution here because if there is an error to the connection then there is nothing we can do um, to solve that so i have to find out and um, debugging or re reconfiguring our Firebase. Next step here is to get a client so we can interact with Firebase. It's gonna be client or error. Give me app Firestore and we will pass the context here. Same error handling. If error is not new, then we're gonna log again. Same error when creating our client. And also a log dot fatal ln error. So that's also gonna just finish the execution. I'm just trying to keep things quite simple here, not doing anything very fancy. And now we need, if everything goes right here, we need a reference for our collection. It's gonna be client.collection and the collection name, I'm gonna call that collection as to do's. I'm gonna create a new document for it. As you guys may know, this database is a document database. I can have a collection here, which says something. And that collection can have, well, multiple things inside. It's kind of a list as we could say. And I'm creating a new item, I'm creating a new item inside the collection called to do's. So that's a new document. Next step is to actually prepare the document and I'm gonna say result or error. And that's the gonna be reference dot set the context, these things are killing me, all of this um, IntelliCode here, and now that's going to be a map for a string and interface, and I'm going to specify here the fields that I want to persist. Uh, I'm going to go with title of my to-do, and I'm just going to give it something, a random to do, and a also a description. Um, I have to buy something. And I believe we are good now. So we may have an error here, which we also need to handle. If error is not new, then log.printf an error occurred uh, when creating a to-do. And we can simply pass something here, or I'm just gonna pass the error again. And we can later on simply print the result here if we want. So as the last action, log.printf, saying result is, and then percent %v. And we can now pass the result here. So that's 
pretty much all we need. So the package main, we are importing all the stuff we need, context, log, and the Firebase. We are now creating a context, a configuration, which we are setting the project ID. And yeah, I just made a typo here. So that's curly braces instead of parentheses. So project ID, the project ID that we have inside Google Cloud. And we're pretty much good to go. Let's give it a try. Let's go run main.go. And we're missing something, 3144. And 31, 44, yeah, oh, of course, there is a missing comma in here. Now let's run again. Let me clean the screen and run again. So we should create something there. Yeah, so that's the result. So we're good to go. We got the connection. You were able to create the item inside the collection. Let's go back here. As you guys can see, we have now a to-dos collection here where we have documents. For some reason, we have some documents here. I was probably testing something previously. Let me delete the collection. Let me also clear all data. Yeah, all good. So let me run it again. Just make sure we are not duplicating anything. And there we go again. So we have to-dos and only one item and we are pretty much good to go. 